What's good everyone, it's Mark from Motogear TV. Thank you guys for tuning in once again and in today's video I'll be showing you one of the easiest ways in my opinion to save weight on your E90 or E92 M3. And no, it doesn't involve you guys going to the gym, so don't worry, let's get started. Now coming over to the inside of the car, some of you guys may have already guessed as to what we'll be doing in this video. But for those of you that are still curious, we will be replacing the factory seats in my E90 M3. Now this is really going to be one of the biggest ways that you guys can save weight in this car. The factory seats are extremely heavy. They weigh about 60 pounds each. My seats are the heated version. So that probably does add an extra layer of weight when it comes to these seats. Now the main thing I do want to address in addition to the seats is going to be how high or low the seats sit in the car. Now another big complaint from myself and other owners of the E90 M3 is going to be how high the seats make you sit in the car. Now I have my driver's seat positioned at the lowest setting but it still sits pretty high. I'm still looking way over the dashboard and I'm sitting way too high for my comfort level. I really want to get myself just a little bit lower and more comfortable in my driver's seat. So that's definitely what we're gonna be addressing and hopefully we'll come out with some excellent results. But overall, I do love this interior. I really do like the palladium silver with the black on the seats and also the competition stripe on my seat belts. I did do a video on the seat belts, so I will leave a link down below in the description for any of you guys that are interested in seeing that tutorial. So now that pretty much wraps up the interior. So let me go ahead and show you guys exactly which seats we will be installing. And there you guys have it, my new Recaro pole position seats that will be going in the E90 M3. Now overall, just looking at these seats, I'm really very impressed as to the quality and the craftsmanship of these buckets. I really do now understand why people pay so much money for Recaro seats. They're honestly one of the best on the market. Now, the biggest downside to these seats in particular is going to be the fact that they are a fixed bucket seat so there's no adjustment when it comes to the back and forth movement now if that is going to be a deal breaker for you guys i will suggest you look into the recaro sportster cs but for this video we'll be focusing solely on the pole positions and now as far as specs when it comes to this particular seat i did go with the artificial leather and the suede inserts now i wanted a seat that would still have some form of leather characteristics while also giving me enough grip on the inside. So I think the artificial leather and the suede is gonna be a perfect combination for my car. I am, however, considering changing these inserts, possibly in the future, to add some palladium inserts, just so I can match the rest of the interior that's in the car. But for now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. And here's just a quick look at the Recaro Sportsters that I was talking about. Here's a quick comparison of the two. So as you guys can see, it does have the adjustable back. So if you want a little bit more comfort, I definitely recommend going with that. Now, as far as pole positions are concerned, Recaro does have two options for you guys to choose from. They have the Recaro pole position FIA or the Recaro pole position ABE. Now, these particular seats are the ABE version. Now, the main difference between those two seats is going to be the ABE is a more streetable version of the pole position. And as you guys can see coming down to the inside, the main characteristic of the ABE seat is going to be that it does have larger cutouts for the seat belt receptacle. Now, that was a big plus for me because I've seen a lot of bucket seat setups for street cars and most people have the seat belts running above the seat. Now, me personally, I think that isn't the best way to run this type of seat. 
Ideally, I'd want the seatbelt to come through these holes. And that setup is very similar to the OEM M4 GTS Recaros that come in that car. I'll throw up some pictures now so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the seatbelt receptacles. I won't be running any multi-point harnesses in this car. So the three-point seatbelt is going to be the main setup for me. But there is one big downside when it comes to the ABE version of the pole position. And that is, these unfortunately aren't available in the States. And the only way for you guys to get them will be to order them directly from Germany. Now, these seats did take roughly four weeks to get delivered to my house, which isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. However, I am able to source these directly from Germany. So if you are interested, be sure to head on over to our website, motorgeargarage.com. Send us an email there or contact us through Instagram. You can always send us a DM and we'll get you guys situated. Now, as far as the physical mounting in the car, you will need some form of seat mount slash rail system. For my particular setup, I did go with the Max Schnell Club Sport seat mounts. Now, there are many options on the market when it comes to seat mounting options, but in my opinion, I feel like the Max Schnell was the best choice for my particular setup, only because it comes as a complete kit with everything you need to get these seats mounted in the car, from the base plate, to the side mounts and even a manual slider system. Everything has a good solid feel to it. The base plate is very sturdy. Now I will say this isn't the lightest setup on the market. I do know some companies do have a direct to floor mount, which means that it mounts directly to the seat and directly to the floor, which means that you have uh, less adjustability when it comes to the positioning of your seat. But for me, I wanted some form of way to be able to slide the seat back and forth. And the manual sliders is definitely going to be a good way to achieve that. Now, now on the contrast, when it comes to the manual sliders, I do know that there is a, another option on the market which allows you to reuse your electric sliders from your OEM seats. Now I decided not to go that route only because I didn't feel like buying additional seats to take the wiring from and I didn't feel like splicing into my OEM wiring so I just decided I'll just leave my seats the way it is and then go for the manual slider setup. Now a small issue that some people do run into when mounting aftermarket seats in the E90 in particular is going to be where to mount the OEM seat belts. Now, one thing that I do appreciate about the Max Chanel system is that it does have options to remount the OEM seat belt and the seat belt receptacle. As you guys can see, there are two holes on the base plate as well as two additional brackets that get mounted on the side. And this is for both sides of the mount. So you'll have a good, nice location to remount your seat belts so that everything can be nice, safe and secure. So enough talking, let's go ahead and remove the OEM seat and then get these installed. And just like that, the seat is pretty much ready to come out. As you guys just saw, the only thing you'll need to disconnect is this big yellow connector, as well as the smaller white connector. And just like that, we are at the halfway point. As you guys just saw, I went ahead and vacuumed out all of the dirt and debris that was stuck underneath the seat. And then we can finally give you guys a quick look at the passenger seat. Guys, I kid you not, this seat honestly weighs about 60 to 70 pounds. It was really heavy. You guys probably saw me struggling just a little bit just to get it out of the car, but man, this thing is massive. <laughs> And now the only thing left to be removed from the seat is going to be the seat belt buckle right here. We'll have to remove that and get it mounted onto our new seat mounts. 
So let's actually go ahead and construct the seat mounts first, then we'll remove the buckle. Now, just as a quick note, Max Chanel does provide us with very high quality instructions. This will pretty much outline all the things you need to know as far as hardware and where the respective brackets go. Uh, we will be referencing this when we're putting the kit together. Now let's grab the base, set it aside, and then start identifying some of the hardware. So we'll empty out the first bag of screws. The second bag will go here. And then the third bag. The third bag does have these black spacers. We'll actually use these when we're mounting the side rails to the seat. And then the fourth bag. This includes the brackets that mount the seat belts and the seat belt receptacle. And then the last bag. This just has some additional hardware to mount the sliders to the seat bracket. But for this first step, we won't need these four larger screws. These will actually be used to mount the entire assembly to the car. The base for the mount is now complete. As you guys can see, we have the slider tracks now installed. I'll show you guys underneath. This is how we have the screws. So the next thing we should probably do is get the bar installed for the slider track. And then after that, we can go ahead and remove the seat belt buckle. Now moving on, the kit does come with three of these rectangle spacers and two brackets for the seat belt receptacle. Now, depending on your setup, you may pick and choose how many of these spacers you actually want to use. For ours, we're gonna use two in the front. And then for the rear, we're gonna add one of these brackets on each side. So I've actually been messing around with the seatbelt setup and I think I actually might swap the brackets. Right now I have the left side installed, but honestly, I'm not really liking the way the angle is on the belt. So I'm going to take the bracket from the right side and then swap it over that way. I'll have more of a straight angle into the seat and I think that will work actually a little bit better. Let's just see what that looks like. Oh yeah, so much better. Now for the right side bracket, I actually ended up taking the one from the driver's side. That way I can have it facing forward instead of reverse. I think that's gonna fit the belt side a little bit better on the right versus the reverse on the left. And we are all done. Now you guys can see both seats side by side. We have the OEM M3 seat on the left and the Recaro pole position on the right. And then coming over to the seat belt, you guys can see it fits perfectly in the hole. Now, in terms of weight, I did go ahead and weigh both seats just to compare. I'll put those weights on the screen for the OEM seat. And then now for the Recaro seat. 
So really big difference overall. The Recaro seat is a crazy difference when it comes to weight. So much lighter than the OEM setup. And honestly, guys, this is going to be such a nice addition to the car. You guys can see it has a very nice sporty look. It's really exactly what I'm going for when it comes to this build. Now let's actually do a quick seating comparison of the OEM seat. This is currently how I sit in the car. As you guys can see, it could be a little bit lower as I mentioned before, but that's why we have the Recaro. Now we can compare. So definitely quite a bit lower than the OEM seat. The Recaro definitely hugs you on the sides and also in the upper torso area. So I'm really excited to get this in the car. So let's go ahead and do that. And just like that, with a little bit of work, we now have both seats installed inside the E90. We have the passenger side along with the driver's side. And as you guys can see, we still have a ton of headroom left inside the car. And I think the Recaro's paired with the Max Chanel sliders is really a good combo, especially for the E90. We have the seat belts all mounted up, nice and secure. And I'm super happy with the way everything turned out. Now, I think the final thing I need to do is probably take this car for a drive so I can really see the overall improvement that the seats will now make in the driving experience as well as the ergonomics while sitting in the car. I can definitely say right off the bat, I am extremely comfortable. I do feel a little bit lower when compared to the OM seats that I had in this car. So I'm really happy. It's definitely a great mod. I'm so glad I did this because man, I've been wanting to change the seats for such a long time. The Recaro pole positions definitely check all the boxes for me. It's a fantastic seat and I would highly, highly recommend it if you're in the market for an aftermarket seat. Now, the only other thing I can probably look to do is install some bolster protectors. I know for most bucket seats, the side bolster area can be a pretty high wear section of the seat. So I really want to go ahead and protect that. I actually did find some genuine Recaro side bolster protectors. So I have one for the driver side and then one for the passenger side. Uh, funny enough, Recaro only made those for the Japanese market. I'm not sure exactly why, but I thought it was pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and slap those on just so I can have everything set up exactly the way that I'd like. So that's going to do it for today's install. If you guys enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and let me know what you think about the new Recaro bucket seats in the E90 M3. Now, as far as interior mods, I do have a few other ideas for things that I'd like to do, but I'll probably save those for a future video. But in the next upload, I will be moving on to some exterior mods. So be sure to stay tuned for that very soon. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. We're gone.